Local Issues, Real People is a community affairs program brought to you exclusively each week by Piedmont Communications. Good morning and welcome to Local Issues, Real People, brought to you by Brown Harris Wealth Management, 309 North Main Street in Culpeper. My guest this Sunday morning is Patricia Pat Board. Pat is a multi-time bench press national champion and a world silver medalist. She's also the author of the book, Bench Pressing Threads of Faith. Uh, Pat, where did the net title of the book come from? Um, it was, I really believe it was divinely inspired by God as he encouraged me to write the book. And I took a 35,000 foot view of my life. I realized that there were three roads um, on which he had placed my feet. One was faith development, health improvement, and my foray into powerlifting. And then I read a book by a woman, an orthopedist who had died uh, died in a violent uh, kayaking accident and met God and came back to earth and had discussed how we as Christians on earth created a tapestry for him. And I said, well, that's it. I'm on threads. And of course, bench pressing is what I do. So it just kind of evolved into bench pressing threads of faith. Okay. Now your book uh, shares the story of your physical and faith transformations. Now, through your stories, readers learn the power that faith has in your life uh, when you've faced everyday obstacles, the frustrating, the poignant, and the tragic. How about an example of one of those tough times that you went through and maybe you couldn't understand when you were going through it, but when you look back, you say, oh yeah, there's the hand of God. God, God had me and I'm okay. Absolutely. Um, on my way to a meet in April of 2014, I was on my way to compete in England, and I was in the airport and reached over to pick up a backpack, and I injured my back. And it was a pretty significant injury. It was very, very painful. And uh, as time went on, I just kind of let it sit there. I kept thinking that it was um, a pulled muscle or something. I had been invited to be on the national team for 2015 to compete in Denmark. And uh, when I started working with my coach, I realized I, I was in so much pain, I couldn't even get into position on the bench. And so long story short, I went to the doctor and they did MRIs and biopsies because they thought septic arthritis had returned to my lumbar region. And all they kept seeing was a big white mass and all of the biopsies and the blood work were negative. They really were unsure as to what it was. So I ended up at the University of Virginia and the surgeon I had there, like my local surgeon, wasn't knife happy. So they wanted to see what was going on, but the pain was so symptomatic and so tender to touch that the doctor and at UVA thought, well, I think we're going to have to operate on your back. But I had to have my knee replaced beforehand because they wanted me to be ambulatory so that I could properly heal after a back surgery. So about six weeks after my knee replacement, I went back to him and um, the pain had just completely gone. Um, it was, he poked and prodded and this, that, or the other, and it didn't hurt. Although um, I have a very, very unusually herniated disc, and it's part in a, a scoliosis part of my lumbar area that I didn't know I had. So the following January in 2016, I started to have a pity party for Pat. <laughs> you know, um, there for about 10 days or two weeks, I was really feeling sorry for myself, saying, you know, God, you keep asking me to start over and over and over and over again. I just don't know how many start overs I have. I, I'm just really getting tired of starting over. And he allowed me to have that pity party for about 10 days or two weeks. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit said to me, well, okay, you're going to start over as many times as I need you to, but don't remember, don't forget rather, I will be with you all of the time. And so I was like, okay, Father, let's start over again. So reflecting back on that, you know, God certainly was with me the whole time. And um, I felt a closeness to him, but it's just in my humanness that I felt weak. All right. Your book also deals with the power that faith has in dealing with everyday obstacles. 
And I was thinking of the Apostle Paul when I read that uh, that thing about dealing with obstacles all of the time. Uh, when Paul asked the Lord to take away the thorn in the flesh, and he asked him three times, and finally the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. And uh, is that true in, in your life as well, that uh, whatever God throws at you, you, you can handle? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I am just like everybody else. You know, I sit there and I, and I think about it. Um, but I think the big difference with me now is that I certainly pray about it. And, and I trust God that he's going to point the way in the right direction. But as humans, we're not omnipotent as God is. And so we can never see God's handiwork until after it's over. And I just have the faith that God is going to be there. He says it in the Bible. He will never abandon us. I believe that with everything in my life. And so I just chug along and keep on going and pray to him when, I, when I'm concerned about something. But more importantly, I trust him. Okay. Now, you speak of stopping in your faith journey every once in a while uh, to determine how far along on the road you've come. When was the last time that you stopped on the road of life and kind of looked around and said, gee, uh, I, I wonder where Patty is? What's what's going on here? I think it was uh, when I went to my last international competition in May. Um, it was, I was on the national team. I had been off of the international platform for three years because of my back injury and my knee replacement. And when I got to the meet, which was represented by a total of 26 countries, including the United States, um, I, was, I was a different person. I found myself ministering to people, total strangers. I have these um, olive wood crosses that I give out to people. Um, and I was just giving out crosses to folks, and people would look at me and say, well, how did you know I needed to have this cross? And they'd start crying. I'd say, well, I didn't know. And I prayed with people. I cried with people. Um, that took up a great deal of my time before the actual competition. And my coach, who is uh, one of my dear sisters in Christ as well, she said to me, she says, well, Pat, if you bomb the meat, which means I don't make any lifts, she said this was a successful meet because you shared the word of God. Okay. And so God blessed me during the meet. He blessed me by enabling me to win my first uh, gold medal at a, uh, and a world championship on April 19th. And I came back so emotionally and spiritually drained and in awe of his greatness and what he has given me. I'm very, very humbled. And since I've returned, he is opening doors left and right and left and right for me to collect seeds for him as he spoke to me aloud in my bedroom and asked, well, he didn't ask, he told me to, you know, but he said it in such a loving way. And oh, by the way, I want you to know that God's voice is the most beautiful baritone you ever want to hear. It is a baritone voice. And he said those words with more love and compassion than I've ever heard. But there was a hint of authority behind them. And um, I am grateful for the opportunities that he has put before me. Now, I have watched videos of you in, uh, in competition. Uh, th this was kind of one of the, because this, this show has been on for over a year, and I've had, you know, several, several dozen uh, participants in the show. You're the first one that I've ever seen, you know, on video, in action. And, boy, I tell you, when you get on that bench, you kind of have to get everything ready and lined up and uh, get, get going. Uh, how much of power lifting and especially with the bench press is mental compared to physical um a lot of it a lot of it is mental but what you focus on is you focus on the process again it goes back to things that you and i spoke to privately um is that you focus on what you can control you can control yourself and so you focus on the process that you use and the process includes everything as to how you set up, um, how you hold your body, because um, getting your body in the perfect position enables you to execute the, the bench press perfectly. I like to think up, I think as uh, the bench press set up as the foundation of the entire lift. And I actually view that as faith 
because faith is the entire foundation of our walk with God. The firmer our faith, the more we develop it. The more I develop my foundation and setting up the bench and the stronger I become, the more we can do and the more I can do in terms of lifting, in terms of spreading God's word. Okay. From where did the inspiration come to write the book? And I'm thinking especially of the uh, thing there, bench pressing threads of faith. Where did the threads of faith come from? As I mentioned earlier, Mm. that came as a result of um, God nudging me to, um, to write my story, and I took a 35,000-foot view. But more importantly, uh, writing the book uh, is a direct result of the day that I received God's command to collect seeds, which actually happened to me while I was getting ready for the work and alone in my room, and I heard this voice speak out loud, collect seeds. Now, I'll be honest. I'm just Mm -hmm. like everybody else. I sat on it for a long time. It was 10 years exact, exactly. And I went to a retreat, and there, the Freelance Star had just put another article about out about me, and people were asking you know, for me to tell them about lifting. And this woman that I had just met said, you need to write a book. <laughs> and I said, well, okay, but I, I'm not sure. So I prayed about it at the retreat, and I said, Father, I'm kind of a stubborn Polish gal here, so you need to hit me with a two-by-four. So Sunday morning, people were giving testimony about what the Holy Spirit had done in their lives while they were at the retreat. And I'm sitting there going, "Okay, holes quiet on the Western (laughs) Front. There's nothing happening. And I no sooner thought that. And the Holy Spirit said to me in my mind, and I'll say it just like he said it, because he knows I kind of have a sense of humor. He said, didn't I tell you to collect seeds? And when he said those words, I broke down in tears and I knew that part of my mission of collecting seeds for God was to write that book. And 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 how do you define seeds for God? What what, what does that mean to you? I, that's God's decision. Okay. It, what it means for me is I go out and I share the light of God. Um, part of my mission in sharing the light of God is I randomly go up to people and give them wooden crosses made of olive wood from Israel. I speak with them. I talk with them about God. I pray with them. I cry with them. Um, Part of my other mission is to go out and speak with people, just like I'm I'm speaking right here. I give workshops. I give guest presentations. I do seminars. um, And in fact, I want to announce that um, Virginia Living Television has just offered me my own show. Wow. It's called Pressing Up. We're hoping to launch it uh, within the next probably six or seven weeks. It will be a weekly show aired on Internet television and simulcast on Internet radio. Uh And it's going to be uh, about my walk with God, about the walks of other people with God, talking about life's lessons, how God has inspired me. Uh, Because, folks, I'm just like you. I'm just like everybody else. I have the same problems, the same aches and pains, the biggest difference. And I can't speak for you and how your walk with God is going, but I trust my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and he has never, ever, ever, ever failed me. And he's not going to fail you. All you have to do is say, Father, I need a hand. Mm -hmm. And it's right there. Uh, the the thing that I, w- I was thinking about, because one of my favorite uh, characters in the Bible is Joseph in the Old Testament, and when he finally revealed his identity to his brothers, uh, he was very upset, and he said, you know, I am Joseph, your brother. Does my father yet live? He didn't know. Mm-hmm. You know, it, there 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 are things that we don't know. It doesn't matter how close we are to God. For some reason, he doesn't reveal that to us. Uh, do you find that in your life that's the same thing? Sometimes uh, God says, I'm sorry, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll hit you down the road, but uh, for right now, you just do what I tell you to do. Oh, absolutely, because it's the same thing when he said collect seeds. I didn't uh-huh. know what that meant. And I spoke to my pastor, and he said, well, that's, that, that talks about, you know, um, spreading God's word and bringing people to Christ. And I'll be honest. I thought he was nuts (laughs) because I was an avid gardener. I thought that I needed to go collect seed packets for the tribulation so they could grow food. And um, so I just have learned to rely on the Holy Spirit to slowly reveal things to me. And I think one of the 
coolest things about God is, is he never, ever gives us more than we can handle. He's really good about slowly unfolding what he has for us. And he's very gentle about that. In 2003, when he spoke those words to me, I never dreamed I'd be on the radio in the newspaper writing books. I didn't have a clue. So I'm okay with that because he's a lot smarter than I am and he has a bigger plan than I do. And if I can do something to help him and serve him in this world, then that's what I'm about to do. Okay. Were, were you were you always athletic or, or the, the power lifting? Was that something that was was something there that you were going to use, or was that something that perhaps God just said, "Okay, Pat, let's let let's go." No, I was not always athletic. Uh-huh. Um, in fact, I was quite the academic. Aha! Uh-huh. And um, in two thousand and six, two thousand and seven, it's a long story, but he had um, put me on a path to improve my health and to improve my diabetes. Because when I started this journey, I was on 57 units of insulin at bedtime. Wow. And I now am insulin free. Wow. So it is possible. It is possible. And um, so I just was, I wanted to retire healthier than when I started work. That was my goal. And I retired after 31 and a half years with the FBI in January 2011. And I was working out in the gym and another trainer who was a power lifter came over and said, boy, you're really strong at the bench press. You should compete. Well, I hope you're laughing because that's exactly what I did. Uh. I laughed at her and I threw out all these excuses and God bless Brooke. She just kept at it and kept at it. And so I did my first meet in June of 2011. And after I took the first lift, I was like, oh, this is a lot of fun. Uh. So basically I retired and took a great sharp right turn. Um, and I was a curriculum designer. I built training programs. I was a troubleshooter for the FBI. I wasn't athletic. I was fat, you know, I mean, I I didn't do anything. And, um, so that sharp right turn led me to where I'm at. Now, have you, you, of course, you, you know about lifters. Uh, that's one of the, I guess, one of the things that perhaps people uh, misunderstand a lot of the great lifters. I mean, they don't look like bodybuilders. No, yeah. absolutely yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and and it is another thing is 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 their speed and their uh, agility and their ability to control themselves. And it's technique. Yes, it's 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 technique. And as you know, as I mentioned um, earlier in our private conversation, um, a great deal of what you lift is technique. And learning the technique is really practicing. So when I say I'm going to the gym to lift, I'm not going to lift. I'm really going to practice. I'm going to practice my bench over and over and over and over and over again. And the more you dial it in and the more it becomes ingrained and the more it improves, eventually it leads to higher weights, if God wills it. Okay. Uh, Is there someone that uh, Pat Board looks up to? Well, my hero is Jesus. I mean, he, he is my hero. He is the humblest person I know. Um, I don't think anyone would argue with that mm-hmm. comment. Um, but there are two specific of uh, my lifting lady friends that I absolutely adore. And I just love uh, their humility and the great way they walk with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that is my coach, Susie Hartwig Gary, and my dear friend, Joanne uh, Miller. They are extraordinary women. They are both extraordinary athletes, and they are both extraordinarily humble. And if I had to find a hum- a person on this earth who emulates humility from an earthly perspective, it would be those ladies. But then again, there's no one who quite exemplifies humility as Jesus Christ. What do you think is life's most important lesson? Love. Everything is about love. Um, When God came to me in my dreams, I was blessed as he revealed himself to me over a series of dreams. And the reason I knew it was him was because I felt this most intense, burning, vibrating love within my being that I had never felt before. And if you, I'm sure everybody has someone in their life that they love with their whole heart. And you know that feeling you have inside Now multiply it by 10 
and then multiply that by 100, and then exponentially multiply it by 1,000, you can't compare it to God's love. And I think if we find ways to show our love toward others, whether it's just putting a grocery cart away for someone else or letting someone else in traffic, we could really influence the direction of this world. Okay. Uh, I, I was thinking as, as, as I was preparing for our show this Sunday morning about Alexander Graham Bell. And when he was working on the telephone, uh, they were having trouble with one part in it that had to twist and, and bend and then come back. And it kept breaking. And everybody was starting to go nuts because they had done it 150, 200 times. It kept breaking and breaking and breaking. They were getting frustrated, but Alexander Graham Bell was getting more excited every time it failed. Absolutely. And, and that, you know. And Opportunities for development. He, they are not failures. He, he, that's, that's what he said. He said, this thing is going to work. Is, is that one of the keys to, to dealing with, with the failure? It's just an opportunity to continue? I, I don't like the word failure. Oh. Because I don't think life has failures. I think life has opportunities for growth and development. Now, if you choose a path and it doesn't work out for you, why is that a failure? That just means that the path you chose doesn't work for you. Okay, you put that, you put that in your mind and you think about it and say, okay, well, let me try another path. If that works, but there's some little bit of problems, it's still an opportunity for growth and development. It's kind of like, I don't like telling children they're bad or they behaved badly. Children are bad. They may have behaved inappropriately, mm -hmm. but it's an opportunity for growth and development. You want to develop your children. God wants to develop us. It's the same thing. He lets us go through things to develop us. They're not failures. They're opportunities for development. Well, Pat, I tell you, I... I may have interviewed somebody that was more optimistic than you are, but I can't remember them. Is there anything else you'd like to tell the, the, the folks on this Sunday morning? Well, at first, I'd like to thank you so okay. very much for giving me the opportunity to share my message about Jesus Christ. If you are interested in purchasing a copy of Bench Pressing Threads of Faith, it's available from Amazon.com. My website, um, benchpressingfaith.com is about to be launched within the next week or so. Okay. And um, so I just ask you to share the message I've shared with you. And I just thank you for this great opportunity, taking time out of your day um, to listen to the wonderful things that God has done in my life. And I know that he is doing wonderful things for you. And I owe everything and all of my accomplishments to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I've been speaking with author and national champion, bench press champion, Pat Board. Local Issues Real People is brought to you by Brown Harris Wealth Management, 309 North Main Street in Culpeper. I'm Phil Goodwin.